Hello class, welcome back. Apologies for the video from Friday. It was it did, was not compiled right, so I re-recorded it for you. Today we're going to be talking about section 6.6, trapezoids and kites. We'll be reviewing the definitions, introducing some new theorems today, 621 to 622. We'll need to add those to the bubble. If you uh, are not familiar with that, please ask. Uh, examples uh, today will be on trapezoids and kites, so if you're logged into your Nearpod, make sure you're using the code on the board. You can follow along. There's a couple problems that I'll have you draw and make sketches on the actual Nearpod itself. That way we're we're having a little hands-on and a little feedback about if you understand what a trapezoid is and what, what a kite is. So let's begin. Uh, first we're going to be reviewing trapezoids, do, going through the definition one more time, doing some vocabulary terms with that. Then we're going to be introducing kites. The big thing about kites is the definition. It is slightly different than a trapezoid. And it is definitely different than a parallelogram, so make sure that you're paying attention to that, and we'll do some vocab words. The new theorems we're going to do today are 621 to 622. Um, on Monday, we'll continue on with the uh, properties about trapezoids, theorem 623 to 624, and we'll review those. On Tuesday next week, we'll be doing kites, theorem 625 to 626. So that's our goals over the next couple days. Um, just a reminder, we'll be getting a practice test next week. Um, that will be due the following week because of, you know, spring break. Uh, so pay attention to the due dates, and we'll continue. Now, what you're seeing here in front of you are examples of quadrilaterals. You know, I, I picked things that, were, that I interact with every single day that have the shape of a quadrilateral or appear to have the shape. So a student desk is one. I use my, my teacher's desk all the time to grade papers and whatnot. The paper itself that I have on the desk itself is an example of a quad. The laptop or iPad that I use every single day. Um, obviously you see an example of a phone here and then um, hopefully this summer, you know, pools or any any other object like that. Um, if you can think of any other examples, I'm gonna, on the slide, I'm gonna um, show you on the Nearpod, I would like you to write some examples that you use every single day that maybe I didn't list, and we'll go through them here in a minute. All right, moving on. Uh, trapezoids. The definition of a trapezoid is a quadrilateral with each pair of, of I, I should say, it's a quadrilateral with exactly one pair of parallel sides, not each pair, but one pair of parallel sides. Vocabulary terms, as you can see here, the bases are the parallel sides. Now I'm going to draw on this actual slide here, just so you can see this. Um, the example I'd like you to notice is that the bases themselves are the parallel walls. That's big. They are different than the legs. The legs themselves are the walls that are not parallel. Now this is not an isosceles trapezoid, just a regular trapezoid, so the legs are of different sizes. As you can see, they're tapered at different angles. These angles here in the corner are different. So the, the actual walls are a different length, and the bases obviously are different lengths, but the bases are the walls that are parallel. That's why they use the little pink arrows. Um, you can see the definitions off to the side. We, we talked about the bases themselves are parallel. The legs are not parallel, and base angles are angles that are formed with a leg and a base. So you actually have four angles on this picture, and they are all considered base angles. We'll be talking about more specific things about them when we get to the first theorems today. An isosceles trapezoid is the one I was hinting at earlier. The definition of that is a quad with exactly one pair of parallel sides and, yes, that is the word and, there's an extra part, the other pair are equal. So you can see from my drawing here, the bases themselves are the parallel walls, but the other pair are actually equal to each other. That's big. That It's not the same pair. We're going to look at that at a later time, but the legs themselves have the same angles. Now, this will this will eventually force certain things to be true about this trapezoid, but again, the vocab terms. Bases are still parallel, the legs are now equal, but they're not parallel, and the base angles are still the angles in the corners. All right. Now, on this next slide, um, I gave you an example of a Mayan pyramid. What I'd like you to do is, is to trace the actual outline of the isosceles trapezoid, if you can see it on the picture. So actually draw right on the near pot itself and trace the outline of the isosceles trapezoid. Now, there could be more than one example in this picture, so just highlight one that you definitely see and label all parts. All right, moving on. Now, the next one is the kite. The kite itself has a different definition than everything we've talked about. The kite is a quad, so it's still four-sided, but it has two pair of consecutive congruent sides. That is very similar to one of the, the properties we've had about 
um, the rhombus itself. Um, I believe the theorem was 619 talked about on a rhombus. It has one pair of consecutive sides are equal, but on a kite there's two pair. And you can see they're different lengths. So this, this length here is different than the other side. Let me highlight the other one. Consecutive means one after another. These are very unlike parallelograms. The opposite walls are not equal. So if you're actually looking at this diagram here, you can definitely see the opposite sides are not the same length. So it's not a parallelogram. Again, this is very aerodynamic. So one of the examples I want to show you here is that on this sketch that you're seeing here on the Nearpod, it's showing you an example of a stealth bomber, a very iconic uh, image of a, of a fighter jet that we use here in the uh, United States Air Force for uh, bombing and also reconnaissance. Uh, you know, when I was a kid, I saw this, this example of this aircraft fly over our house every single day because they fly out of Omaha, they make their pass over North Iowa, and then they fly back to base. So it's one of those things I wanted you to see. All right, uh, moving on here. Uh, this next example, I'd like you to fill in the blank on this. So you're looking at the vocab terms. The words are at the bottom. You're going to have to drag them up and fill in the blanks. Um, the first three people that get it right, raise your hands. I'm going to have you share your answers in class. Perfect. Moving on. All right, now, the new properties about trapezoids. We have theorems 621 to 624. Again, we're going to add these theorems to our pod, to our... Uh, to our bubble, I should say. So make sure that you're continuing to add those. Those are due next Wednesday, so keep that in mind. Uh, but let's start with the first theorem here. This is uh, theorem 621. If a trapezoid is isosceles, then each pair of base angles are equal. So as you can see here, now I'm going to actually walk through why this actually works. So I'm going to draw right on this picture. Um, so again, we're given that it's isosceles, so two walls are equal. You can see the markings on the picture. Now, why the base angles in certain corners have to be the same, here's why. And you can see on the near pod that it has the postulates and properties and what pages you should be looking these up. But there's this thing called the perpendicular postulate that you can draw a perpendicular line to any line that you have a point that's not on it. So I'm drawing a perpendicular line. I can draw it on the other side as well, perpendicular perpendicular line, and I can prove that these two triangles that have dots in are actually equal triangles. The reason why they're right triangles because of the perpendicular, but the fact that GH and FJ are actually parallel, that forces these perpendiculars, the altitudes, to actually be the same length because parallel lines are equally spaced. That's a part of the definition. So in these right triangles, there's actually two markings. These are the legs and the hypotenuse of these right triangles. And that's the same on the other side. Well, we have a hypotenuse leg theorem back in chapter 4 that said if the hypotenuse leg of one right triangle is equal to the hypotenuse leg of another right triangle, which you see here, then the triangles are equal. And if the triangles are equal, then everything about everything about them is the same, including the angles in the corners. And then we can eventually get down to this angle because the angle next to it is 90, and if you add these together, that should be equal to this side because of the same reason that the angle in the triangle is equal and we have the 90 next to it so you can add them together using angle addition. So that's why Theorem 621 works. And again, it's only on a trapezoid. It has to be isosceles for the base angles to be the same. And that was what I was hinting at earlier with the definition. Now, last property today is talking about Theorem 622. It is the converse of the first one. So it has the same wording. That's what converse means. They're switching the words around. So in this one, they're talking about that it has one pair of base angles being equal. As you can see here, the base angles are the same. And we're going to try to prove that it's isosceles, namely that it actually has two walls being equal. Now, again, this is not the picture that, I, that I'm going to use in class to actually prove this. I'll draw down below so you can actually see how we actually prove that, given the base angles, that the walls are actually the same length. So I'm going to try to draw a very crude drawing down at the bottom. So if you're drawing these in your notes, so here's my trapezoid. And we're given given that walls are parallel because it is a trapezoid and we have base angles the same. So the first step that I that we talked about was that I'm going to draw this line that is parallel to this wall over here. Now I know it doesn't look parallel, but assume that it is. If that's true, then this wall length right here is actually equal to that wall because it's a parallelogram, right? The top and bottom are parallel, the right and left are parallel, so this wall marker can transfer over. Now the other thing that I can transfer over is the angle. Um, let's see, let's use purple here. This angle can transfer to here because of corresponding. Now, the reason why that's important is because now if you actually look at this triangle over here, 
it's isosceles because the two base angles are the same. Those are the markings I had earlier. Well, if the bases are the same and it's isosceles, that means this wall can transfer over, making it an isosceles triangle. And now if I erase all these markings, and I go back, I'm going to just redraw this. Now that I've transferred that marker all the way across, I had those base angles, and this marker is now transferred over here. Now you have an isosceles trapezoid. So that's the whole point, that we can transfer those markers to the, to the right side, and it forces it to be isosceles, which is what we're trying to show here. We're trying to show that it is an isosceles trapezoid. All right, on Monday, we're going to continue on with the next two theorems. Uh, make sure that you're adding these to the bubble, and be ready for, we have one assignment, a book assignment next week. That'll be due later in the week, and we have a practice guide that I'll hand out next week. Um, again, test coming up in a week and a half, so be prepared. All right. Thanks for paying attention. I'll see you in class on Monday.